economist of the Bank for International Settlement, Settlement said that European creditors were particularly exposed to the global market turmoil. So I first asked for Steve's thoughts on that and which sovereign credits within Europe he thinks are the most vulnerable. Here's what he had to say. The trouble with Europe, of course, is as well as having a paralyzed private banking system, they've got a paralyzed government money system. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very pessimistic about Europe, and I think what's more likely to happen in Europe is the success of some right-wing, probably right-wing party, uh, possibly a left-wing one in Italy, uh, but breaking out of the euro. And now that will be something, if it actually happens, if we have a breakdown of the euro, that will be crisis material on a grand scale. So that's the, the main worry I see is... is political fragmentation in Europe, repeating really what happened in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. and, and some analysts have made the argument that Europe is in a good position actually to, to weather this particular storm. They say Eurozone growth forecasts have remained unchanged, that direct trade links between China and Europe's most vulnerable economies are weak, and that weaker exports will be offset by stronger domestic demand in, for example, Spain or Ireland. What do you make of that argument? Naive. Um, the basic reason why there's growth in Spain, for example, I've just done the numbers recently, is the rate of deleveraging has slowed down. Now, ironically, simply if you if you were reducing debt and then you reduce debt more slowly, you actually stimulate the, the level of demand. So what's happening in, in, in Spain and also happened in Ireland is simply a return to leverage coming back in again and causing the economies to expand a bit because the private credit system is expanding. Now, this is exactly the same roller coaster that Japan's been on for 15 years now, 25 years really, if you go back to 1990. And they still haven't learned that every time they see a recovery, all it is is a change in the creation of credit by the private banking system, which will run out at some point because people are carrying so much debt that there's just not that headroom to take on a sustained increase in the amount of debt as we had from in America from 1993 to 2007. So it's another, it's another fall sparrow. We're going to see so many fall summers coming through in these numbers. And, and I'm, I'm actually despairing at the capacity of our policymakers and certainly our economists to ever really come down to understand how the economy actually functions. Right. Well, you know, some politicians in Europe right now are, are really concerned about uh, the direction that uh, the region is going into at this point, uh, particularly as it relates to concerns over how the refugee crisis could have uh, impact the Schengen Agreement and yeah. really move to destabilize Europe. Well, what can be done, in your view, to ensure that that does not happen? Uh, we have to stop bombing Syria and Iraq and start, start bombing them with hospitals rather than with bombs. I think we, we, we are ignoring the extent to which this huge refugee wave is the long-term consequences of the absolutely disastrous policies the West has followed in trying to bomb uh, dis dissidents, dissidents into submission in the Middle East. So if we, if we hadn't gone into Iraq in the first instance, which itself was a obviously a wrong move if we hadn't stuffed up Afghanistan as well after the Russians had stuffed up there themselves previously uh, maybe we wouldn't be seeing quite the same waves of, of refugees coming out of that part of the world as we are now the other issue which again we're not doing enough about is a lot of these refugees particularly from Africa are climate refugees and if we think this is bad now we ain't seen nothing yet so to, to really just think about it we have to stop deconstructing the Middle East and start constructing it and in Africa, we have to do something serious about climate change, or what we're seeing now is just going to be a, a very small prelude to an enormous wave of climate change refugees. Yeah, that's a very good point, because I know that that was one of the messages that came out of Davos, um, 